As in the 1930s, the development of lighter and stronger body armor awaited a breakthrough in material science. And that breakthrough came in 1965 with the development of polyparaphenylene terapethalamide. This is better known as Kevlar. Discovered by DuPont chemist Stephanie Krolek, Kevlar was originally developed as a replacement for steel in belted automobile tires. With a tensile strength of 3,620 megapascals, it is pound for pound 10 times stronger than steel while maintaining excellent flexibility and cut and puncture resistance, making it ideal for ballistic vests. In 1971, Lester Shubin, Director of Science and Technology for the National Institute for Law Enforcement and Criminal Justice, initiated a research program to evaluate the ballistic performance of Kevlar. And if you happen to be an animal lover, you may want to skip this part. These tests involved strapping different thicknesses of Kevlar cloth to anesthetized goats and shooting them with various caliber firearms, all while monitoring blood oxygen levels and other indicators of lung and heart injuries. The program revealed that Kevlar was capable of protecting against most common handgun rounds like 38 Special and 9x19mm at short ranges, preventing the bullet from penetrating and reducing blunt force injuries to less than lethal levels. Indeed, Kevlar ballistic vests were found to increase the wearer's probability of survival by a whopping 95%. The National Institute of Justice published its findings in 1976. However, by this time, Kevlar ballistic vests had already been commercially available for several years, developed by companies such as Smith & Wesson and American Body Armor. Such vests soon became standard equipment for police forces around the world, and according to the International Association of Chiefs of Police, have saved the lives of nearly 3,000 officers annually since 1987. Like earlier forms of soft body armor, Kevlar ballistic vests work in two stages. The outer Kevlar layers absorb the energy from the bullet, causing it to slow down, deform, and spread its energy over a wider area. The inner layers then prevent the bullet from penetrating and help further spread the force of the impact. Indeed, most ballistic vests also incorporate additional pads called trauma pads to further reduce blunt force injuries. However, while a ballistic vest can stop a bullet and save its wearer's life, they may still suffer severe bruising or even broken ribs depending on the type of bullet and the range at which they were shot. Since, by design, the outer Kevlar layers are damaged by bullet impacts, ballistic vests become less and less effective the more hits they absorb and can be defeated by multiple hits to the same area. Kevlar also loses some of its strength when exposed to ultraviolet light, bleach, water, and salt from human sweat, meaning the ballistic layers must be encased in a water and lightproof covering of ordinary nylon. Vests are also typically retired and replaced every five years to ensure maximum performance. But while soft body armor can protect against most common handgun rounds, they are still largely useless against rifle bullets, which are significantly more powerful. For example, a typical 9x19mm handgun has a muzzle velocity of 360 meters per second and a muzzle energy of 481 joules. By contrast, the 5.56x45mm NATO cartridge used in many modern assault rifles has a muzzle velocity of 993 meters per second and a muzzle energy of 1,755 joules, nearly three times. Times higher. On that note, given that the bulletproof vest dog round wears at the end of Back to the Future appears to be a soft Kevlar type and that the Libyan terrorists were using AK style rifles, we're going to have to call Hollywood on this iconic scene. Sorry to ruin your childhood, but Doc Brown would be very, very dead. Indeed, the only way to stop full power rifle bullets is with solid ballistic plates like Small Arms Protective Insert or SAPI used by the United States Armed Forces. Modern ballistic plates are typically made of hard ceramic like aluminum oxide or boron or silicon carbide, often laminated together with polymers like ultra-high molecular weight polyethylene or kraton to form a tough, impact-resistant composite material. These plates are in turn coated with a tough polymer layer to protect the wearer from spalling, the back of the plate flaking off into deadly high-velocity fragments when the front is struck by a projectile and backed with soft trauma plates to help spread the force of impact. These are then inserted into pockets on a special vest called a plate carrier, which is typically made of ballistic Kevlar fabric for additional protection. There are two levels of solid armor commonly manufactured today. Level 3, designed to stop intermediate rounds like 7.62 by 39 and 5.56 by 45, and the full power 7.62 62 by 51 NATO cartridge, and level 4, designed to stop more powerful rounds like the 3006 armor piercing. However, these specifications tend to vary from manufacturer to manufacturer and come with a number of caveats. For example, as with soft armor, solid plates can be defeated by multiple rounds hitting the same area. Also, most plates are designed for use against regular lead cord bullets, which are easily deformed by the hard ceramic. Bullets with cores made of tungsten, tungsten carbide, or other harder metals are much more likely to penetrate. 
Finally, plate armor is five to eight times heavier than soft armor on a protected area basis, making it significantly less comfortable and convenient to wear. As in every aspect of life, there are no ideal solutions, only trade-offs. And speaking of trade-offs, this all finally brings us around to how many bullets a piece of armor can absorb before it is rendered useless. Well, as you might imagine, given how many different types of body armor we've been discussing, this depends. As for some general examples, we'll start with soft armor. The moment these are hit by a bullet, the fibers around the area of the impact to compromised and lose some of their ability to absorb and dissipate the energy of a bullet. Thus, if another shot were to hit reasonably close to where the first hit, the bullet has a good chance of penetrating, even if the vest would have normally been able to handle it fine. Thus, while it is possible they can take multiple hits in some cases, and even be rated for such, depending on the caliber of the bullet, the way the armor was made, etc., it's generally deemed unsafe to rely on this. Moving on to ceramic plate armor, in most cases, these plates are designed to shatter when hit by a bullet, dissipating the force of the impact by breaking up the bullet so that the smaller pieces can be absorbed by some backing material like Kevlar or some form of polymer or, well, sometimes both. However, a side effect of this is that a large portion of the plate is then completely useless against a second shot, similar to our previous example with soft armor. That said, there are types of ceramic armor that are designed to take multiple rounds, just, again, relying on this is generally considered unwise in most cases. And this brings us to polyethylene armor plating. In this case, the impact of the bullet actually melts the plate, which then rehardens, trapping the bullet within it. Due to this, polyethylene armor can survive being shot numerous times without losing its ballistic integrity, and we found examples of manufacturers that claimed their polyethylene armor could take hundreds of rounds before failing. Polyethylene plates also have the advantage of being roughly half the weight of ceramic for the same level of protection. Hybrid body armor is also quite common at higher levels, meaning your mileage may vary from a given piece of body armor to another, with the NIJ's ratings giving a decent overview of what it's capable of, and often the manufacturer's testing giving even more insight into how many rounds of a given type of bullet the vest can take before failure. All this said, again, while a given piece of body armor may pass the tests and even be claimed by the manufacturer to protect against much more, most manufacturers recommend replacing body armor even after a single shot. And beyond that, even in some cases if you just happen to drop your armor on the floor. This is because, although body armor is designed to stop bullets, some types are surprisingly fragile. For example, ceramic plates can easily crack if dropped. Moving on to soft body armor, stretching or deforming the fibers in some way, again in ways that are sometimes not obvious to the naked eye, also can compromise their integrity. Some manufacturers even advise replacing Kevlar-based body armor if you just get it wet, as previously alluded to, this potentially weakens the fibers. On that note, because daily, otherwise innocuous activities can sometimes compromise body armor, the standard in the body armor industry set by the NIJ is to replace a given vest a maximum of every five years, even if it's never been hit by a bullet. Finally, for the fashionably minded individual who might need some protection from getting shot, it turns out bulletproof suits are not just a thing in the movies, but a real product that makes military and police body armor look like something made from an era when hitching up your covered wagon to go to the market was still a thing. Perhaps the most famous manufacturer of these is the Colombian company Miguel Caballero, founded in 1992 by, well, Miguel Caballero. What exact materials he uses to make his line of bulletproof clothing isn't clear, though he states it's a hybrid between nylon and polyester. The advantage of his material is that it is significantly lighter and thinner than Kevlar at equivalent protection levels. And indeed, if you were to go check out their website, their undershirt body armor looks pretty much just like any other undershirt, unless you look really closely. As for the price tag, this isn't listed on the website, but it would appear a basic suit top made by the company will run you upwards of twenty dollars to $30,000, though you can get other products such as an undershirt for less, apparently starting at around four grand. Funnily enough, one of Caballero's favorite ways to advertise is in fact to put the clothing on someone and then personally shoot them, leading to the company's slogan, I was shot by Miguel Caballero, with apparently a few hundred people shot by the man himself to date. They even have a YouTube channel where you can go and see him shoot his wife in the stomach. Not just stopping bullets, some of Caballero's products are also rated to stop knives, be fireproof, waterproof, etc. Essentially, think of the type of snazzy and robust clothing seen in most spy movies, and that's pretty accurate in this case. 